I'm allergic and I don't like guns. So is there a third option of neither? Speaking okay. of creeps. <laughs> Craig is a creep. <laughs> Craig, you're such a creep. Such a creep. Okay. But also, thanks for being the best audio recorder, sound engineer ever. Love you. The best free one, anyway. We'll pay you right. eventually. <laughs> there <laughs> one day. <laughs> okay. Welcome, comrades. You're listening to The Triad, where we're spooky, but sensitive. I am Shannon. I'm Shelby. And I'm Hannah. (laughs) Yay, we did it right the first time. Awesome. Okay, so before we get into today's topic, does anybody have any announcements or anything? I just have a little Uh, quick thing, so. No, I'm good. Uh, Don't have to, so. We, most of us have microphones, which we will have eventually, so (laughs) soon we will have non-tin can sound quality. (laughs) Right. (laughs) Yeah, mine's being shipped at some point mine, <laughs> mine wow. should be delivered today but i am not in the state you're... in which it's being delivered to so who knows what will happen to it you're in a different time zone than where your microphone will be so yes, yes. Yeah. oh shoot what are we gonna do when you're in a different time zone we'll work it uh... out <laughs> we'll work it out that's fine it's only an hour yeah that's true I'm not worried about it. if wine and crime can do it when one of them lives on a different continent then i'm pretty sure we can yeah. do it too yeah i guess my little thing was just a thank you to people who have listened so far we've had like 30 something downloads which isn't oh, like terrible nice. considering oh, we didn't advertise this at all other than to people we know shockingly most of them are in illinois but we had four in virginia oh my God, what? <laughs> what yeah we had four in, like, to virginia. It's in virginia that we know i don't know there's four in the dc area oh in Missouri. oh wait um dc Do i we know people i don't yes my sister's like best friend lives in virginia oh, cool. and she followed our instagram so i assume oh yeah, maybe yeah. she listened yeah. i don't know yeah. but if my uncle listened or my did, aunt like... i will be very surprised <laughs> <laughs> well hey there you go yeah and then we have a couple we have one in syracuse three really in california oh the one in california. syracuse is definitely a relative of mine <laughs> I just assumed that. So Yeah. Anyone in New York is my relative. Yeah. yeah. And then probably the ones in Missouri are people that you and I went to college with, Hannah. So I'm assuming. I don't know. But I mean, yeah. hey. So yeah. Thank you everybody for listening and shout out, out to our friends and, and family. Stuff. For yeah. Because that's all we've had so far, probably. <laughs> right. <laughs> that's okay. Okay. My topic today is the sanctuary church. Heck yeah. Do you know, either of you know anything about the Sanctuary Church? No, but I'm excited because now I get to open your folder. Yes, you do get to open my folder. There are pictures I in there. Have oh like Wait, is this the one with them, like... But that's all I know. Yeah, Shelby, I wouldn't be surprised Isn't if his you name like? Them. Is his name like Mr. Moon or something? Yeah, their last name is Moon. Mm-hmm. Then yes, I definitely know about these people. Okay, cool. Okay, it's one of those that, like, as you start talking about it, I'll probably be like, mm-hmm. "Oh yeah, definitely them." Yeah, Shelby, I would have been surprised if you hadn't heard of them, and you'll understand why in a little bit. Okay, yeah. So also, just to... I just love cults. So. Yeah. Well, that's not even why. There's a different reason, but we will get there. Okay. okay. So I'm just gonna run through my sources real quick. Um, I have two Wikipedia articles because Wikipedia is the bomb. Um, one is on the. Please US give them three dollars. What? I said, please give them three dollars. That's all I need. Yes. <laughs> um, so yeah, the first one is on the unification movement, which was the sanctuary church's like mothership. And then the other is on one of the leaders of the group. So I actually heard about this from an A&E documentary called Cults and Extreme Belief. It's on Hulu and it's amazing. So there are going to be show. quotes. What? So that's a good show. I'll stop talking. <laughs> no, you're fine. <laughs> um, there are going to be quotes throughout my little spiel here from Teddy Hose, who was a former... UC member. I'm going to shorten it because I can't say this the entire time. 
And then Samuel Pock, who is a relative of the leader of the Sanctuary Church. Um, I have an article from the Gospel Coalition. I have an article from the New Republic. I have an entry from the Encyclopedia Britannica. I have a Vice article. And then I have two Guardian articles. Cool. And then one of the Guardian articles is what makes a cult, which is going to lead me into my first actual chunk, which is what is a cult? <laughs> so... Just to kind of lay this out as the groundwork, it'll give you things to look for when I am talking about this group. So a cult, according to the Google Dictionary definition, is a system of religious veneration and devotion directed toward a particular figure or object. And then psychiatrist Robert J. Lipton outlined three warning signs that the organization might be a cult. And I copied this directly from one of those Guardian articles. So the first sign, there is a charismatic leader who increasingly becomes an object of worship, worship Excuse me, as the general principles that may have originally sustained the group lose power. This is a living leader who has no meaningful accountability and becomes the single most defining element of the group and its source of power and authority. And so you can see this in like the Manson family and Jonestown. <laughs> like this is like Yikes. one of like the hallmarks <laughs> of a cult. <laughs> And that's really like what separates it from being like a religious system is having this living charismatic leader with no accountability. Because like most religions worship dead people or non-humans. You know what I mean? Yeah, so they have like a that's what separates deity it. figure. <laughs> yeah, a... deity. That was the word I wanted, not non-humans. <laughs> dead people <laughs> dead or people. aliens or whatever. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> oh my god. Well, I mean, if we're science, worship as an alien. Yeah. <laughs> uh, let's we'll talk about that. them later. Yeah. So Barf. the second <laughs> the second sign is um, there is a process or excuse me, a process of indoctrination or education is in use that can be seen as coercive persuasion or thought reform, which is commonly called brainwashing. The culmination of this process can be seen by members of the group often doing things that are not in their own best interest, but consistently in the best interest of the group and its leader. So you see this again in the Manson family when he got them to murder people or in Jonestown when he got them to all complete suicide, right? So again, Yeah, but if we're going to argue about Jonestown, I will definitely take the side that um, Jim Jones was 100% a mass murder because those people had no choice. Oh yeah, for sure. But that's what this point is basically saying. Like they're doing things that are beyond their control. Oh like yeah. They do not have, yeah. yeah, they don't have the culpability of making their own decisions anymore. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because yeah. at the point of like the Jonestown suicide, it was like a, most of them wanted out at that point. But yeah, I mean, they didn't really have a choice in the matter. So yeah, 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 yeah. All right. Anyway, so... we're not talking about Jonestown. We're <laughs> not right now. No. <laughs> nope. Um, I'm just using it like as an example. So um, the last Mm -hmm. sign is that there is economic, sexual, and other exploitation of group members by the leader and the ruling coterie, which I had to Google how to say that freaking word because it's spelled like (laughs) coterie, and that's not how you say it. So (laughs) it means group. I don't know why they didn't just say group. Whatever. Because Because they're being fancy? Because it's uh, the Guardian, probably. (laughs) They're a British paper, so that's probably why. (laughs) Oh, yeah. Jeez, and the so, those Brits. <laughs> so yeah. you see this in Scientology with the economic exploitation for sure, mm-hmm. which is going to be another part of um, uh, this group, too. So, OK, now that we know what a cult is, we are going to go into the history of the Sanctuary Church. OK, so the Sanctuary Church is a splinter group off of the Unification Church. Like I said, gotcha. it was founded. OK, OK. Real quick sidebar. Yes. I know about the Unification Church. Yeah. So even if I don't know Sanctuary Church like super well, I do know a lot about Unification. Mm-hmm. So yeah. Anyway, not no, important. You're fine. You're fine. <laughs> okay. So it was founded by Sun Myung Moon. Um, he was born on February 25th, 1920, in what is now North Korea. He was raised Christian. He was arrested by North Korean government in 1946. For varied reasons. I've seen like three different explanations from three different sources. So one of them said it was for spying for South Korea, which South Korea didn't even like. South Korea did not exist in 1946, correct? I don't believe so. Yeah. I'm pretty sure the Korean War was later than that. Yeah. yeah it was in the so 50s. Like, I will look it up right now. Yeah. So I don't 
think that one whatever it could but be just I don't, general yeah, I don't spying. know when they like officially yeah. split yeah I saw another source that said he was arrested because he was going around claiming to be the messiah which is definitely could be a reason and a different one that said he was arrested for practicing polygamy so I don't know okay what but like arrested for? Why would they arrest someone for just claiming to be the Messiah? Oh, Korea spit, spit, split in <laughs> 1945. Oh, okay. So it was literally like a year. But the war okay. didn't happen until um, 1950. Okay. Cool. Okay. So Thank you for it, checking. it could have been that one. No yeah. problem. It Thank you. Google. Thank you for checking. Yes. Um, I mean, if you're in... If you're in North Korea and you're going around and you're worshiping your tyrannical leader and somebody else is going around saying, no, I'm the one you need to be worshiping, I could see why he would be arrested for that. Yeah. Now knowing mm-hmm. that, like, they yeah. had split by then, yeah, that makes yeah, that makes sense, I yeah. guess. Regardless of the reason why, he served 34 months in a communist labor camp in North Korea. <laughs> cool. Yeah. So... He was... We when we took the train, this is super unrelated, but when no, we took fine. the train, we rode right past a bunch of like North Korean concentration camps. Like we could see that. the train was, uh, freaky. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Gross. I was like, you might want to. <laughs> yeah, when I was Korean in North Korea yeah. on my study abroad trip. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I lived in South no. Korea, so like. Yeah. That was why, Shelby, I thought yeah. you may have heard of this, because they started in South Korea. The group yeah. Did. Um, uh, maybe. I don't know. I don't we'll know. See. We'll get there. So, Moon was released in 1950 um, because of the Korean War. Um, United Nations troops were, like, advancing on the camp, and the guards just kind of abandoned ship and just ran away. So, all the nice. prisoners were released. <laughs> well, that's one way to do it. Yeah. And then sometime between then and 1954, he moved to Seoul. Shout out to Seoul, one of the best cities in the world. <laughs> so yeah, this church has kind of existed in two different forms. So the first version, God, these names are so long. The Holy Spirit, excuse me, the Holy Spirit Association for the Unification of World Christianity. Mm. Okay, but what is up with cults and having ridiculous names? I don't know. Seriously. They need to stop. <laughs> like, if someone came up to me and they're like, I'm part of the Holy Spirit Association for the Unification of World Christianity, I'd be like, how did you get all of that first try? <laughs> <laughs> I'm following along on your notes. Oh, but, okay. <laughs> um, I was going to say, I don't even remember, like, what happened five minutes ago, <laughs> let alone what Shannon is saying. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> um, but, no, like, if someone came up to me and said that, I would have literally looked at them and been like, and you're a freak. So Goodbye. People, huh? Yeah. <laughs> exactly. So what's your cult about? <laughs> Okay, so this thing uh, was founded on May 1st, 1954. Um, Moon, by this time, I don't know how long he was claiming this, but this also may have been why he was arrested. Um, He claimed that he had been visited by Jesus when he was 16, who told him a bunch of stuff that later became their core belief system. And we're going to get into the beliefs later. I really hope he was going up to people and being like, so I just learned a bunch of stuff. (laughs) <laughs> nothing specific just a bunch of stuff it was very specific <laughs> actually i just haven't gotten there yet okay so the movement first reached the united states in 1958 moon moved to the u.s in 1971 um and then i know at least one of his sons was born in tarrytown new york but i don't know if that was where he where moon initially immigrated to i don't know and then he kind of like flitted around the country doing random things so i don't actually know like where he set up shop i'm assuming it's in new york but i i don't know and so uh the members called themselves moonies although that is now considered derogatory um they pretty much immediately became a target of the anti-cult movement of the 50s and 60s um because the church was accused of brainwashing their members duh Uh, yeah (laughs) yeah hannah are you still there yeah okay (laughs) i just want to make sure i'm trying to figure out where tarrytown is because (laughs) <laughs> that sounds familiar. I wonder. Yeah. I think it's. Hold on. I don't know where it is. I just wanted to make sure we didn't get cut off or anything. No, I'm here. Okay. Oh yes. my god! It's where is near it? where my grandma lives. Oh. <laughs> wow. So I... do you see this? Uh, wait. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. What? <laughs> where is this? Maybe I'm wrong. So we're gonna go visit your grandma and visit. Oh wait, no. It's just where. It's <laughs> oh no! This born. is straight up in the city. Oh. I thought this was because it said Sleepy Hollow. Did I read that? 
It's in Westchester, gr- which is like right oh. next to New York City. Oh. Yeah. Oh, this neighborhood is called Sleepy Hollow. My grandma lives near the town of Sleepy Hollow. Like okay. Sleepy <laughs> Hollow from the from the story Sleepy Hollow. Okay. I believe they are called the their uh, high school mascot is the headless horseman. I could be wrong. Interesting. That uh, they should. That would be. make sense. If yeah. not, okay. Missed opportunity. Yeah. Terry Towns. Um, I just looked it up. I should have done this before, but I didn't. It's north of New York City, but not by a lot. Cool. So, where did my notes go? There we go. Okay, so yeah, we, they became a target of the anti cult movement, and then in 1982. So 11 years after he moved to the U.S., uh, Moon was convicted of conspiracy and filing false tax returns and served 13 months in prison. What is it with, like, cult leaders and evading taxes? Well, I think Wasn't a lot that- of them. What? Well, because if you're technically a religion, you don't have to pay taxes. So. Yeah, but, like, you personally have to pay taxes. Yeah. That's I don't true. know. So with the religious thing, you have to file for it. Like, you're not automatically granted it because you say you're a church. Like, you have to file for those exemptions. Yeah, but I have a feeling there's which a he bunch did not of, like, do. cult leaders who are like, mm, I'm a religion, so I'm just not going to pay yeah. them. Yeah, and then I don't know if these charges were related to his personal business or if it was related to the cult itself. I don't know that. Gotcha. I'm assuming it's related to the cult stuff, but I don't, I don't know 100% sure for sure. Is. I couldn't find yeah. it. Yeah, well, because if it's part of the, like, convicted of conspiracy, mm-hmm. and he was convicted of, like, both things at once, it's probably probably, probably yeah. related, but probably. I don't know. Well, it also didn't say what, what he was conspiring to do. Yeah. Like, I don't know what the end crime would have been. <laughs> right. Conspiring to be a dick. I mean, yeah, probably. but that technically isn't illegal. <laughs> so I don't know. It should yeah, be. Know. I'm not, yeah, I don't know. Anyway, he's in prison in 1982 for 13 months. So in 1994, so 12 years after he was convicted, it was May 1st, 1994, which was 40 years after the original organization was founded. He founded a new organization called God, the Family Federation for World Peace and Unification, which he's is better really than big the last one. On unification. Yeah, we'll get to that. It's actually kind of relevant. Um, okay. <laughs> um, so it included, and it was technically a new organization. It wasn't just renaming the old one. So with this new one, it included the old organization, which I'm not reading the acronym, it's just no, plus people of other faiths with similar moral beliefs. And they became really known for these mass blessings where thousands, and I mean thousands, I think there's a picture in the folder, of couples piled into an arena and were given a mass marriage blessing, um, which, again, is important. We're getting to the beliefs in, like, a minute. Um, they also Wait, did didn't, some... didn't Guy Fieri do that for a bunch of gay couples? Yes. But he's but a I good like... guy, and I love him for yes. everything he does. I'm not saying that the marriage blessings in and of itself are bad. The context to it is bad. (laughs) We will get to that in a little bit. (laughs) Yeah, no, no, no. I get that because I know what they did. But like, yeah, Guy Fieri officiated a mass wedding ceremony in Miami, Florida for 101 same-sex couples. Oh my God, he's so perfect. I love him. (laughs) Yes. Anyway. (laughs) Okay. And then just two more points on this. Um, They did some like... Well, I guess Moon technically did some political stuff that isn't super important. It's just good for, like, knowing which side of the aisle he's on. He really liked Nixon and Reagan, and I feel like that sums that up pretty well. (laughs) I don't think I need to explain that any further. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, that's that's kind of telling. Yeah, sums it up. I was just thinking the other day, this is kind of off-topic. Everything I say is off-topic, but... Why in the movie The Exorcist was the daughter named Reagan? Was it like, was it like a political comment or what? Because she got possessed. I'm so confused. Isn't that based off of a, I don't think so, because that came out in 1973 and he wasn't president until the 80s. And it was based off of a book. All right, well, cut all that out because I'm stupid. No, you're fine. And it was based off of a book. So, but in the book, I'm It was based off of a book of a real life thing that happened in St. Louis. Yeah, but like the real life, the real life kid who got possessed possessed Possessed. was a boy yes yes and then in the movie i don't know i don't know what did you was it a different one that was based off the st louis one was it this it was this one yes it was um yes and also you know that 
Um, so the cross that used to be on top of that hospital where that whole case took place. Yeah, that's at the city um, museum. Yeah, it used to be at the city museum. And one time we were at the city museum and I touched it because I was like, Why oh, this is the that? this is the cross from the Why top of the exorcist that, church. Anna? And then because I felt like it. And then Emma made me Google a picture of Jesus and we all touched it instead of Hail Mary. So <laughs> that's how we well, solved that... that problem. Oh, that was Lord. the smart thing to do. Yeah. yeah. Props to Emma yes. for being the smart one. <laughs> being a good oh, little man. Catholic girl. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Literally, my last point before we move on to beliefs is that Moon died in 2012. <laughs> nice. So, here are some of their beliefs. Then this is of, again, the Mothership Church, not the Sanctuary Church. We haven't even gotten to the Sanctuary Church yet. So, their beliefs. <laughs> they're, uh, y'all are going to get mad. <laughs> You two are for sure. So, um, well, we'll see. So first off, in the beginning, you know the story of Adam and Eve and how Eve plucked the apple, which is why we all have original sin, right? Yeah. Uh-huh. Yep. So according to the UC, Eve slept with Satan and then with Adam, and that's why we have original sin. <laughs> what a bitch. Well. <laughs> yeah. I want to I want to see the uh proof of that yeah where, where are those get, receipts <laughs> where we get that information from their moon yeah and so can well, i call him moon moon fine i don't care he's dead yes. it's fine, fine. <laughs> <laughs> he's dead it's our podcast it's fine so the only way to and remember cl- moon is claiming that jesus like came to him when he was a teenager and told him this so there isn't like Obviously, I mean, there isn't proof anyway, but yeah. there for sure isn't proof of this one because of literally Moon just saying, Jesus told me this when I was a teenager. So, yeah, the only way yeah, to. Yeah, I also thought I saw a gnome when I was little, like, from <laughs> my door. So, you know, oh, I wouldn't trust anything that comes out of a child or teenager's mouth. I was going to say, like, yeah. I have recurring dreams of a dragon lady. So, like, <laughs> is that supposed to mean something? Clearly, yes. Okay. So, <laughs> the only way to fix this problem, like to fix the problem of original sin, basically, was for Jesus to form a perfect marriage in order to redeem humanity. And Jesus was supposed to do this, but because he was executed before he could, that role was passed on to Moon, you know, 1900 years later. Uh huh. Yeah. Which is why those mass marriage ceremonies are so creepy. We get into it a little bit more, too, but they super believe. That marriage is, like, the ultimate spiritual thing that you could possibly do because you're helping propagate this, like, these perfect marriages, basically. Weird. Also, yeah. reason number one why I would never join that cult. Yeah. <laughs> um, That's the only reason, though. Yeah. So far. <laughs> we'll get there. So, <laughs> so, members of the church refer to Moon... And his wife, which this is his second wife, they pretend he was not married to his first wife, but that's a different issue. Um, they refer to Moon and his wife as the true parents, while married couples and their families within the church are regarded just as, as the true children. And they're trying to create a pure blood lineage that is free of original sin. Well, that sounds way too much like eugenics, and I don't like it. It does. The pure blood thing, mm-hmm. really. Uh, yeah, it's not a good look. Okay, you friggin' Slytherins. <laughs> right? <laughs> Jeez, let's just call you Voldemort and get it over with. <laughs> yeah, um, get it. You're racist. <laughs> <laughs> um, what's my next point? There we go. Um, they actually produced their own religious text, and it's called the Divine Principle. And most like religious, like religion based cults don't do this. They just have like their own weird interpretation of whatever religious text they started with. Mm-hmm. So that's weird. In and of itself. And so they accept the Christian Bible as a starting point, but the divine principle helps interpret and fulfill the purpose of the Bible. Because apparently the Bible can't do that on its own. Okay. So the divine principle is basically like the book to interpret. It's the kinda book like you know how whenever you're reading the Bible. Yeah. It's kinda like whenever you know how you have like whenever you're reading Shakespeare and sometimes it'll have like a plain English interpretation on the side. Yeah. Because otherwise it doesn't make any sense. I think that's what they're trying to say the divine principle is. Okay. Cause I was gonna say, is it like the like book of like how you interpret tarot cards? <laughs> I don't think so. 
So I don't based... know. I haven't read it. You know, like I don't well, know exactly like how it Shannon, you didn't read their books. whole psycho doctorate? No. I did okay. not. Jeez. <laughs> Damn, do what kind research. of researcher are you? <laughs> Thanks, guys. <laughs> you didn't indoctrinate yourself into the cult first? God. <laughs> Shannon, you didn't get married in a mass ceremony? Yeah, what to a fuck? stranger, which we will also get to. To a stranger? <laughs> That's part oh, of it. We'll get into oh, it in a little oh, bit. Oh, I know. Yeah, I that, know. Yeah. Okay, so moving on with the beliefs. They believe in abstinence and they oppose homosexuality. Like, they super oppose homosexuality. Um, well, they do not yeah, allow... because that's not the perfect marriage, apparently. Yeah. Yeah. Because um, you can't have like 40 babies if you do that. <laughs> <laughs> um, they don't allow alcohol or drugs. Um, they're very anti communist, which I will say makes sense oh. considering Moon was in a communist labor camp for 34. Oh, months. that's true. Never mind. I get where he's coming from with that. I guess um, I'll give him that one. Yeah. And then they're also like Fine. really supportive of like Korean unification, which is where the unification part comes into their name. Okay, that, that yeah. also mm-hmm. makes a lot of sense because there's, I mean, unification of Korea is a big to-do. Yeah, and I don't know enough about that to pass an opinion. I'm just, yeah, they just support it. That's where the unification comes into their name. That's all I got on that part. So within the group, um, marriage is, like I kind of said earlier, it's like the highest, not the highest level because we get into that too, but it's one of like the most sacred things you can do because you can only go to the kingdom of God, which is, I'm assuming is heaven if you're married. So only married people can go to heaven. And then there's like a bit more, like there's more to it, obviously, but those were like the important basics that I thought we needed to understand in order to understand everything else that goes on. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it's trying to be Christianity, but there's extra added to it. And they're worshiping a living person instead of God and or Jesus. Yeah, that's where I get like upset at cults because people think that Catholics like worship the pope that is not true no <laughs> or like most whatever catholics, um, we can get to that later i'm just not most a lot of catholics hate the pope <laughs> so. well they hate this pope especially because yes. <laughs> he's like cool and progressive yeah, i was gonna say i mean former catholic i liked the pope but i shouldn't <laughs> i love the new pope he's yeah. freaking cool <laughs> so i'm not catholic i can't relate yeah you're fine <laughs> can't um, relate <laughs> I'm only two thirds of the way Catholic, so like I technically shouldn't have an opinion on this either. Two thirds of the. I'm only two thirds Catholic. So. I don't I got... know that it's like. It's not. What? That's just how I explain it. Okay. Oh well, goodness. I got baptized and I did first communion, so I got two of yeah, the right. three done. So. That's fair. I guess. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Anyway, <laughs> this is where we're going to get into the split. So Moon appointed his son, Hyung Jin Moon, um, as his successor. So Moon had 16 children. Um, so there's that. Ew. Yeah. All of the kids He have... could have a TLC show. He could. Oh my god, 16 <laughs> Moons and Counting. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Okay. Oh my god. So goodness. all 16 kids have Korean and American names, and they personally choose what we want to go with. And from everything I have like looked at, um, Hyung Jin has actually to- chosen his American name of Sean to go by. So I will be calling him Sean throughout this. That's why I'm not just picking it because it's English or American. Like from what I can tell, because it's a strong sure Irish name. <laughs> <laughs> sure, Shannon. Yeah, mm-hmm. I, that's what he. Yeah, that's what he chooses to go by. And we're gonna call him Sean and not Moon because I'm calling his dad Moon, and that's just gonna get way too confusing. So he is Sean. <laughs> Okay. So, yeah, he was chosen. You could call as... him Daddy Moon. No. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> Let's not do that. No, we're not doing that. Um, so, yeah, he was chosen as the um, successor. They had, like, a kind of an inauguration ceremony in 2008, and they called it a power transmission ceremony, which whatever. Um, he was appointed to be the international president of the group. So... The way the church is set up, it's also a business, which we will get into in a little bit. So he was appointed like the head of the business, and therefore he was the de facto head of the church as well. Um, Hmm. And so he really became like the acting head after his father's death in 2012. And then I just have a note. I didn't know where to put this, but I feel like I should mention it. He studied theology at Harvard. And 
I don't understand personally how you do that and then and then run a cult. These... Yeah, and then just like the bullies. No, you do it so you can has. run a cult. Yeah, it's just to me there's a disconnect, but I don't know. So, um yeah, Shannon, that's interesting. Yeah, I just thought it was that's just a weird little tidbit and I really didn't know where else to stick it, so I threw it in here in this section. Sure. Um yeah, so Sean and his mother had different opinions regarding the direction of the church. Um, so she started having him removed from, like, his leadership positions, because apparently he had several, starting in 2013. And... Wait, so what kind of control does his mother have then? If he's, like, the leader, how can she remove him? Because I think it was kind of like, because remember, it's a company. From what I can tell, it's company and church kind of smushed. Yeah. And so, so she like, had a board. Yeah, I think that was how I didn't get like details. I couldn't yeah. really find details on like how that actually works. But Ooh, she's also, secret. you know, she's also like the wife of the late leader. And I guess, you know, so she had a lot of power too. Yeah, I guess if yeah. she had like support of the like she had congregation of, or whatever. Yeah, so she had support of the congregation and then support with her other children too, because she eventually had his one of the other sons replace him as head of the organization in 2015. Okay. So he just got pushed out because he had started shifting the UC to become the sanctuary church and uh-huh. people didn't like that. And so that was why he got pushed out. And after he got pushed out, he kind of just kept at it and formed his own church, but he still sees himself as like the true heir to the, gotcha. uh, to the unification church. Okay, so we have background. Now we're going to get into all of the controversies because there's a lot. So, what? <laughs> no. Yeah, with Moon himself, he was probably not mentally well because he thought he was the Messiah. And you don't do that if you are mentally well. Okay, but if he thought he was the Messiah, then why would he think that Jesus came to talk to him? Because Jesus is the Messiah. Well, because Jesus failed in his mission to create that perfect marriage. So he's like the right. new Messiah chosen gotcha. to fulfill Jesus' so Jesus fake was just mission. Like, here you go. Here's, here's so if he was a yeah. if he was a um, Twilight book, he would be Messiah New Moon. Yes. <laughs> That is exactly it. <laughs> He's like Messiah Thanks. version. <laughs> oh my goodness. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus was... things... I love comedy. Oh, I man. mean, my life. let's be real. The Twilight books were a cult. So. Did not, not read them. With you. God, I kind of want to reread them as an adult just so I can be like, wow, these are bad shit. <laughs> also, because isn't she releasing like the one that's from Edward's point of view? Yeah, like five years later or however long. I, I think it's been it like released. 10 years because it, it been was 10? like 2009. Okay. Well, because we read it oh, in yeah. middle school. It's I don't remember when that one was supposed to come out. The movie came out our freshman out. year. That's all I remember. Yeah. Well, and then like I remember them announcing it. And in my I remember head, eighth like, grade. That's. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I remember them announcing Midnight Sun was that a month or two ago. And I was like, didn't they do that already? Because I forgot it. Well, because what she did is she like wrote it and then someone leaked a bunch of chapters or something. And then she was like, it's on permanent hiatus, blah, 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 Mm -hmm. or like indefinite. And yeah, I guess now she decided to release it. Yeah, (laughs) sure. See, I forgot the indefinite hiatus part. So I was like, what the fuck? They already. I just remember (laughs) being like heartbroken about it. And then the next year I was like, why did I ever like these books? Yeah. Gross. Yeah. That was a phase we like to forget. Yep. Okay. (laughs) Back to Crazy Moon. Um, He basically held his wife captive for like three years in an attempt to make her pay penance for Eve's sins. His first wife or his second wife? The second wife. Oh. Um, I don't actually know what happened to the first wife. She just kind of, they got divorced and then she was like, no, she isn't dead. Well, she might be now, but it wasn't because of him. At least from what I can tell. Okay. Um. So, yeah, she wasn't allowed to leave her room or see her family. And this was his his way of, like, purifying her of original sin, basically. Hmm. Yeah. So, (laughs) yeah. And then. Stockholm um, Syndrome waiting to have it. Yeah. Um, And then his kids were seen as, like, (laughs) mini-gods. So he and his wife weren't, like, involved in raising them. So that task fell to their followers. But the followers wouldn't punish them. Because they were seen as gods. So that created 16 undisciplined 
children. <laughs> um, so 16 little brats. Yeah. Hmm. Cool. <laughs> Okay. Love that. Uh, as yeah. a, a child care provider, I can tell you that that was probably the worst time of those followers' lives. Yeah. Let me yeah. see how to barf. Right? <laughs> yeah. Gross. I did, ugh, one time I was subbing for this math class. It was, it was um, like a two-week gig because the teacher cut a girl's hair in class. What? Because she what? wouldn't stop <laughs> Did I tell you this? Okay. No. So, um, this teacher in New Hampshire, it was on the national news. It was like a big deal. He, um, he had this student, and I honestly, never mind, but she was kind of annoying. But, um, <laughs> he, she wouldn't, she wouldn't stop messing with her hair during math class. And so he got so frustrated with her that he just went up and cut her hair off. Like, just cut a big oh chunk of God. her hair off. Okay. So um... he had to be fired. Or he retired in disgrace. I don't know. For that. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I subbed for that math class for two weeks, and God, they were little ding dongs. I couldn't really. <laughs> I don't know. It was awful. I hate middle school. That's all I'm gonna say. Middle mm-hmm. school's gross. Okay. Yeah, Allie wants to. Middle school's well, like freaking worst. Allie is, you know, special ed for middle schools right now. But just, I, I need to ask her. I think she applied to be at the high school next year specifically because. Oh God. Are terrible. Middle schoolers are literally awful. Like, if you want to hate your life, teach middle school. Yeah. Seriously, that's why I went back to primary school, because they are so sweet, and oh my god, I love them. Every day's a joy. <laughs> <laughs> I just have babies. And little two-year-olds. And, and they can barely gremlins, talk. But I love them. <laughs> they're gremlins, but I love them, because, there you go. because they can't talk like, back to me yet. When they're... When they're mean and upset, it's understandable because it's like, oh, I pooed my pants or I need a nap. And it's like, yeah, I get that. But when a middle schooler's mean, it's like hormones and bitchiness (laughs) and I can't deal with that. No, because when middle schoolers are mean, they find like the one thing you're sensitive about. Whatever that is. It's that John Mulaney joke. Yeah. Yeah. He has feminine hips. (laughs) Yeah, but, like, my babies, they just, like, scream at me, and all I have to do is scream back at them, and all of a sudden, they're laughing. So, like, it's cool. And then it's, like, your best friends, and, you know. Right? <laughs> I just have to give them a bottle, and they're like, oh, my God, my savior. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, we were talking about controversies. This is controversies with, like, the Unification Church itself. So, from the very beginning, people thought this thing was a cult, <laughs> for obvious reasons. They had, I guess they still have, very totalist demands And this is a quote from Stephen Kent, PhD, who is a sociologist and a cult expert. And he was on that A&E documentary. I want to be a cult expert. That's what my goal in life is. (laughs) We're halfway there. We have a podcast. Right. So um, (laughs) so, Episode two. mm -hmm. He kind of was like (laughs) like, these totalist demands as people gave up everything and worked 24-7 for the organization following the directives of and his leadership so it's that, very all or nothing like you have to do this or you're out very scientology but he didn't like communists yeah. like what <laughs> yeah <laughs> i don't know you don't, yeah and you don't like communism but you like dictatorships okay yeah well when he's the leader of it hell yeah right okay <laughs> um and so this is another quote from the documentary um It's a former UC member. It's a clip from an interview with like a talk show host or something. It didn't say like what exactly it was from. And it was probably from the 80s or 90s. It again didn't say. It just said former UC member. And I'm like, that was not helpful, but okay. (laughs) (laughs) Um, This man said, when I was in the group, if Moon had ordered me to kill, I would have killed like that. And I would have been willing to die in the process. And then he continued... First of all, you're to be taught that your own physical life isn't important anyway. It's assumed that you're going to perish somewhere along the line, but you're working for eternal life in heaven. Well, that sucks. Like that. That's a <laughs> real, real positive cult mm-hmm. we got going on here. Yeah. You might die. You're probably going to die, but like, yeah. it don't matter. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then what are the next? Okay. This episode of the documentary talks to a few people, and the main person it talks to is Teddy Hose. So in his, this is his own experience. You are expected to devote yourself completely to Reverend Moon and his family. You are expected to love them more than their own parents. 
um, more than your own parents. Um, they had more pictures of the Moon family than their own family on the walls of their house. So it's very 1984 with like, we're always watching you kind of stuff. I don't think that was the context they were going for. I just, that was just what I thought of. It's just creepy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, it still sounds very like Scientology in that like. Yeah. David it's Miscavige very similar. Like... Yeah. It's similar. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Can you imagine going over to like some basic white people's house and there are just Korean people all over their walls? Well, they're, they're like, also, it's our family. Teddy's also Korean, I believe. Oh, okay. Well, I'm just yeah. saying, like, imagine, <laughs> still, like, yeah. no, I'm saying imagine, like, a white family who's in this cult. Yes. <laughs> yes they do I thought it was funny. Never mind. No. <laughs> they do have white people in the congregation. Just Teddy is not white. I wasn't talking about him. Okay. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Your point is still correct. <laughs> Thank um, you. Yes. So, But are they Teddy's allowed to have friends outside of the cult? I don't know. They didn't get into that. Gotcha. Yeah. I didn't, at least not that I could see, they didn't really get into that. Okay. Yeah. I don't know. So, But it's like, kind of control their whole life, but we don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so yeah, um, Teddy's parents eventually saw that the Moon family was receiving like all of the proceeds from the church while other church families were living in poverty. And they ended up leaving before Sean even became the leader of the UC. So this was well before the Sanctuary Church even started. And so this is just another quote from a former member. Um, this is from the documentary. And it's a clip from an interview or a different documentary, probably again from the 80s or 90s. And it looked like it was kind of from like a protest or something. Um, and so this woman, um, and this leads into my next controversial point. Um, it worked like a dictatorship. We did exactly what we were told without questioning and believed that we were selling for God, that we were connecting the people. We were selling to God by taking their money. And intrinsically, faith was wrapped up with making money and bringing new people into the church. Because of this mentality, the church became a multi-million dollar business <laughs> very, very quickly. <laughs> so early followers raised money by selling flowers and candles in airports and like out on the streets. Um... And then I saw so this. Oh my god, have you guys ever been make money? Have you ever okay. been approached by those um oh my god, what are they called? Uh I want to say Kardashians, but that is not the right word. No. <laughs> um shit, what are they called? Is this a religion or Yes, it's those people who are like in the airport. You know the movie Airplane? I haven't seen the, that the in The people here. in Orange Oh my god, hey, um Okay, Orange makes me think of Rajneeshis, but I don't think it's that's... not Rajneeshis though. It starts with a yeah. K. Um, okay. they love the Beatles. Okay. What? Huh? They do. <laughs> what are you talking Religious about? Religious people in airports. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on. Oh my goodness, Hannah. What are they called? What are they called? I'm trying to find it too. Hare Krishnas. There we go. <laughs> oh. Okay. So... One time I was at the airport and a Hare Krishna, he wasn't dressed like one, but I knew he was one because I think he told, I don't know, he either gave me a pamphlet or told me, but he was trying to sell me these Beatles, these books about the Beatles, like the band. Interesting. And he ended up just giving me one for free and told me something about how I would make a good wife or something. I don't oh, know. It was very strange. Hey. But I was like, okay. cool, thanks, bro. Is this like a typical thing that happens in airports? Cause... Not to me. It was as, at the Lambert Airport. As many airports as I have been in in my lifetime, I have never heard of that or seen that. Listen, or weird it. shit happens to me all the time. I've never. Yeah. I, I mean, that's cannot true. have a normal life. Hannah's like they, a lightning rod for weird shit. True. Yeah. I'm. Oh yeah, yeah. Okay. Um. Where was I? Yeah. They raise money by selling stuff in the airports and on the street, and then. I saw this claim in, like, one article. It wasn't corroborated anywhere else. It doesn't mean it happened or that it didn't. I'm just saying I only saw it in one place. Apparently, some Japanese followers persuaded elderly Japanese widows to give them pretty much all of their money by claiming that buying, like, a trinket that they were selling could liberate their ancestors from hell. So is this thing, like, worldwide or just America? So it started or in Korea. It spread, I should have gone into that more, sorry, spread throughout 
I guess that would be Eastern Asia. Yeah. Um, and then eventually made its way to other parts of the world. Gotcha. Yeah. That's like selling indulgences. Yeah. Yes. It is. Bad it vibes. Is. That was one of my points. Like, that's this is literally selling indulgences. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh, here we go. I should have put this in here. I'm sorry. So, yeah, started South Korea, expanded really, really quickly. By the end of 1955, they had 30, like, religious centers in South Korea alone. And then they yeah. expanded throughout the world with most members living in South Korea, Japan, the Philippines, and other nations in Asia. By selling all this junk, by 1974, the church was making $8 million a year. But okay, really- but how many people are buying flowers? Well, I guess flowers outside of an airport makes sense. But Okay, candles? those people in the airport are very persuasive. They will not leave you alone. <laughs> In the movie Airport, doesn't he punch that guy? I haven't seen that movie in years. I don't know. Yeah, he does. does. So, and I mean, they were doing other things too. Like, this was just early followers raised money doing this. They had their fingers, like, they were doing other things as well. So, yeah, by 1974, they were making $8 million a year. Would either of you like to guess what the current value of that is today? Um, I'm so bad (laughs) at numbers, it's embarrassing. I'm going to go with. You already looked. (laughs) <laughs> well no i stopped but you said eight million a year yep in 74 um let's go with 50 million yeah you're close hannah do you want to guess no <laughs> okay you don't have to <laughs> Go on, Dave, don't make me you're fine I hate- so I hate numbers. I always you're right. I can't. I have I have math anxiety. <laughs> I know. <laughs> it's a real you thing. I'm sorry. I forgot. <laughs> this is just supposed to be a fun little game. I'm sorry. Why'd you have to bring it up? <laughs> okay. So it's about forty one point six million dollars today, and that was per year. Gross. Yeah. And then this was another way they made money. You had to purchase your way into a certain level of heaven, which is how Scientology also gets a lot of Yeah. Um, and then, so what I'm getting from this is that we need to start a cult. <laughs> because no, I can't be. afford real life. I'm just going to keep being a professional student until I get a big girl job. I like my plan more, personally. Yeah. No, but I I want to start a cult, guys. Let's do it. You can do no, that on your own uh... time. <laughs> what kind of friends are you? The ones who don't want to get arrested. Yeah, well, for real. I know how to not do that. <laughs> Jeez. Anyway. <laughs> so. I just was thinking about something my dad said once. Oh, God. All right. <laughs> When I lived in the um, the house on Lombard Street in uh, Springfield, it was like, it had a weird attic. And my dad one time was like, hey, you know, you could probably mummify a body up there. <laughs> <laughs> See, so, my, dad, yeah. my dad's thing is he always says it's only illegal if you get caught. I mean, he's not wrong. <laughs> yeah. So, and this is coming from the guy who's a cop, well, so, like, it's He fine. is wrong, but practically, he's right. <laughs> right. Yeah. Right. Okay, so, in addition, in addition, wow, in addition to having to purchase your way into a certain level of heaven, those mass marriage ceremonies I talked about, they were only attended by those who could pay the fee. Which is That's... also gross, because you had to be yeah. married in order to go into heaven. I don't know if they had marriage ceremonies outside of these giant ones i'm assuming they did but still you're making it hard for your poor but didn't you say they had to be like married to a stranger so it was no like well because i they don't have to marry a stranger it's that moon chooses who they marry and it is often a stranger i was gonna get into that later sorry i should make that more clear No, no no you're good I thought they just, like, paid a fee, showed up in a conference hall, and were like, yeah, this random I mean, dude, you marry him. <laughs> kind of. That is kind of how it works. But like I said, I don't know. Isn't that a TV is. show? What? Isn't that a yeah, TV show? Yeah, it's like a TLC Married show. at first kiss or something. Married you have to get married after you night. make out. That yeah. sounds awful. I'd yeah, rather die. Much. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, I don't know. But then I don't know if they... I should have looked into this. I don't know if they had, like, individual marriages. I'm assuming they did, but I don't know. Yeah. Hmm. Either way, okay. gross. Yeah. So. And were these mass marriages, like, 
legalized? As far as I can tell, but I don't, I don't know. I I mean, I guess you can become an officiant officiant on the internet. As long as you signed, uh, I mean, as long as you signed a marriage license and you go through the rigmarole of a marriage ceremony, you're married. So as long as they had signed a paper and somebody said, okay, cool, you're married, who was able, like, legally able to say that, you're married. That's true. You know? But, okay. yeah, I don't know. I didn't see anything, like, get into whether or not they were legal. Okay. I don't know. Plus, like, these happened in different countries, too. I need to so stop interrupting know. you, but I have no, so fine. many questions about cults yeah. because I love them. Yeah. And I just um, want to understand. Yeah. Well, and then, like, I don't know what the laws are in Korea, you know? I don't know what their marriage laws are. I barely know what they are in the United States. Oh, so, that's true. Like, I don't know if they were legal in other <laughs> are you countries in law school? I am, and I just took family law, so you'd think I would know this, but we didn't talk about it, so. Nope. <laughs> oh, Shannon. We talked about, okay, in family law, you talk about divorce. You don't talk about marriage. <laughs> well, that's not the part that makes you money. No, you don't need a lawyer to get married. You probably need a lawyer to get divorced, so that's what we talk about. That's so, fair. Yeah. So, anyway, they had a metric shit ton of money. They poured this money into real estate and political donations. Um, and then the moon's estimated business holdings, which I think this is a current accurate number or is current at the time of the A&E documentary, was about $3 billion. It ranges from everything Thanks. from weapons manufacturing to seafood distribution. Wait, weapons manufacturing? We will get to that. It's actually relevant. Oh That's why God. I brought it up now. We will get to that. <laughs> Would you like a pound of shrimp or a pound of bullets? <laughs> That's not very many bullets. <laughs> okay. I'd rather have the shrimp. <laughs> I'm allergic oh and I don't God. like guns. So is there a third option of neither? <laughs> nope. That's it. I'm allergic. You can marry a stranger, but that you got to pay for that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So that was all their money nonsense. So just with some more, just like more general controversies, I guess. Um, Moon and his wife were barred from entering Germany, the UK, and several other Western European countries because they were suspected of being cult leaders. Duh. Wait, what year were they barred from being in Germany? I don't know. Damn it, Shannon. I just know they were barred. I didn't think you were going to ask me that question. (laughs) That's a very specific I just want to know if I lived in Germany at the time. I mean, I feel like they were probably barred fairly early because this has been around since the 50s. You know, so I feel like they've yeah. been barred for, well, and then I don't know, well, they can't still be because Moon is dead, but I don't know if that um, barring, I guess, would, like, is still a thing, or if it was just temporary until they kind of died down a little bit. I don't know. I don't know. Germany's question, pretty right? good about, <laughs> they had, yeah. they had, like, one problem with that, and now they're like, never again. Yeah, pretty much. Ew. Yeah. And so, yeah, my next point is that thing I already kind of touched on it. So Moon would match up members for marriage, and he would tell them when they could have sex. So he often matched people up with complete and total strangers. And so this is just another thing. Like, a lot of cult leaders, obviously, are, like, super hypocritical. And this was one of the things in which he was very hypocritical. So his oldest son was just a hot mess. He was, from what I remember, I don't remember if he was alcoholic or a drug addict or what. In his parents' eyes, he was not, like, a functioning member of their church, right? And remember, you can't have alcohol or drugs within the church, so their son is just, I left it a hot mess. So um, Moon married him off to some girl and said that her job was to reform him, and that if she didn't, she was failing God. Huh. That sucks for her. (laughs) Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, and then another one of his sons died at the age of 17 in a car accident, and this was in 1984. And then, if you remember, Moon's teaching said that only married people could enter God's kingdom. So in order to make sure that that happened, he married his son, his dead son, to someone posthumously. And the woman that he married him to is still alive. She was probably born in the 60s probably she sees this as an honor and as far as i can tell she never married anyone else she took moon as a last name yeah and then just a couple more points like we already have hammered this point but they literally saw moon as the equivalent to the second coming of jesus which is obviously very controversial for a lot of religious groups um yeah yeah. and then a lot of (laughs) 
Yeah. And then a lot of members were essentially being used for like slave labor within those entities that the church owned. I couldn't find anything like specific about that. I just know that that was happening. So, well, I mean, if they were living in poverty and all of their money went towards like the moon family, then exactly. uh, Yeah. Essentially. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So now we're finally going to get into the actual sanctuary church. And that is yeah, so this whole time you were talking about just the unification church, right? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I f- we needed that information. Well, yeah. I thought I mean, you have to, to have the context. Basis. Yeah. You need to have the history of everything. Yeah. So this church is located in Pennsylvania. It takes everything from the UC and just adds in more bad shit. <laughs> um, cool. And so he brought a decent amount of congregants over to his new church so like it's really like former members of the uc make up like the core of this group from what i could tell um and he uses this to kind of like push his beliefs forward and these beliefs that i'm about to get into they formed over the span of about two years which to me seemed short to completely change how you're viewing (laughs) something yeah yeah so in this position (laughs) what (laughs) I've been writing a book for like 10 plus years and I still won't let anyone look at it or hear about it. Yeah. How can you like write a whole reel in two fucking years? Oh my God. Yeah. So yeah. That's them. So this next part, let me finish. Cause you're going to want to interrupt me. Let me finish Ye- it. Oh God. Before <laughs> you interrupt me. Oh, okay. No promises. So. Right. Sean believes that in John chapter 2, we see that Jesus is an assault weapons manufacturer. Unless I read the wrong section, that chapter talks about turning water into wine and driving money lenders out of a temple. So I don't know where that comes from. Additionally, his brother owns an arms manufacturer that's about 20 miles away from the church, and they basically force members to buy assault weapons so to me it seems as if he created this belief in order to make money from his brother you may now interrupt (laughs) oh my god what the fuck (laughs) okay first of all assault weapons Uh, didn't exist during the time of the bible but okay correct i'm just gonna ignore that uh fact yeah (laughs) and then you're right that is the, okay, cool. The part that is Fine turning thought. water into wine and chasing the money lenders s- out. Yeah. And the water into wine was just an example of a miracle mm-hmm. to basically prove who he was. Mm-hmm. And the money lenders out of the temple was just because they were basically like. They were being shitty, right? Well, it's because like the temple is a sacred place, and to have like right. money lenders there and basically yeah, and they were like, like selling birds and shit in there. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, they were treating it like an a market, and that's not what the temple is for. And so he like chased them yeah. out because it's a sacred place. Like yeah. literally nothing in there says anything about weapons. Yeah, that maybe that's there why... might have been a whip. Yeah, that was yes, he did have a whip. Yeah. yeah, but that doesn't mean that he manufactures weapons. No. Yeah. yeah. No. Hannah, what were you no. Gonna say? Oh, I was just gonna say I love that uh, water into wine story because Jesus, because like Mary's like Jesus, come on, the party's like such a bummer right now. He's like, God, Mom, fine, okay, I guess. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's pretty yeah. great. Anyway. Hashtag okay. Catholics don't read so, the Bible, so that's my interpretation of it. Yeah, <laughs> it's so, basically right. Yeah. Um. There's a couple more bible-based things here so he also believes that luke 22 which again i may have gotten it wrong but from google what google told me this is where judas decides to betray jesus and um, the last supper occurs and it depicts jesus and according to sean this depicts jesus as telling his followers to employ self-defense because jesus says to sell your cloak and buy a sword and apparently that means you employ self-defense at all times no matter what Oh boy. Oh what? boy. Oh yeah. boy. Oh boy. <laughs> All right. No. Yeah. Well, I'm just going to leave it at that. No. Yep. <laughs> okay. And then there's, I think this is the only other. Yeah. There's one more Bible thing. And then we're moving on to the Second Amendment. Um, <laughs> oh, so um, Sean refers to the concept, I guess, of the rod of iron a lot. 
So this is first mentioned in Revelations 2.26, which is a translation of Psalm 2.9 in King James. Um, it states that Jesus will rule with a rod of iron. Sean takes this to mean guns. Most scholars and religious persons take this to mean a shepherd's staff. I think that one's probably more accurate. <sighs> Just yeah. Just <saying. laughs> And mm-hmm. then, yeah. That yeah. Is- Again, yeah. we're just going to leave it at uh, no. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then the church is actually like one of the other names for it is Rod of Iron Ministries. So he like really pushes like this is like the core one is that guns are sacred because they are the rod of iron that Jesus will rule with. And then I have a quote here again from Teddy, who's that former member who is on the A&E documentary. He said, when I saw that Sean was Quoting from the book of Revelations, that was a red flag to me because Charles Manson and Dave Koresh, who also just had like a crazy amount of guns, they often cited the book of Revelations to justify their behavior and attitudes to the rest of the world. That's like all doomsday cults. They do that because the book of Revelations (laughs) is like super creepy and weird. And they're like, look, it's the end of the world. Here's what we're going to do. The end of times. Like, yeah what the entire book is about so if yeah anybody is quoting revelation 24 7 then they're doomsdayists then get out mm -hmm. run go away that's so teddy had the right frame of mind if you're quoting Mm -hmm. revelations to support like all of your beliefs and that's the only part of the bible that you really quote then like there's something up there Mm -hmm. then get out of that person's house (laughs) <laughs> get the heck out of dodge kind of with the doomsday thing um so i don't think that they think a doomsday is coming they just think that they're under attack so sean is really big into the second amendment um obviously and thinks that they're yes. fighting back against a tyrannical government so he has he has so many I mean, YouTube videos. he might not be wrong in yeah. that generally tiny yes little smidgen yeah but see with his crazy context, no. Like, right, you're yeah. fine, bud. Chill. Um, so he has, like, so many YouTube videos. Um, he has so many oh, YouTube videos. Yeah, I know and he talks Jimmy about YouTube. He talks about, like, protecting yourself against tyranny and outsiders and all that. But they're not under attack. Like, they're not even, like, in the press that often. You know what I mean? Like, it's not like with Scientology where they're constantly being... I was going to say, like, you say Scientology and everyone knows what you're talking about. Like, yeah. And no, they've never most been... Most people cringe. Yeah. Right. From what I can tell, they've never been under any kind of a physical threat. So, like, we don't know who they're fighting against. <laughs> uh, the ghost. Yeah. I don't know. And then this is a quote from Teddy. He talks about as if there are mafias and psychopaths out there that we have to fight against. But again... There's nothing. Okay. And then this is a <laughs> Yeah. And then this is a quote from the AE documentary, and it's showing a section of one of these YouTube videos. So this is Sean speaking right now. The citizenry needs to have weapons that can tear people up because if the government gets crazy and freaking tyrannical and sends people to kill you, you have to be able to have the force and the threat of tearing those people up. And he said this while he was wearing a crown made out of bullets. <laughs> Uh huh. Hmm. So, thoughts coming. <laughs> um, uh, lots of things, common. but you know, mm-hmm. we're gonna I mean, start with the crown made out of bullets. <laughs> That's a good place to start. Why? Yeah, he has a crown made out of bullets. I don't know guns or ammunition at all. They're very like they're big bullets. So they're probably like they're probably for some kind of rifle. I think yeah. that they are. Yes. Yeah. Especially yeah, if he's doing, cool. like, assault weapons. They're not just, like, a bullet for, like, a little pistol. Yeah. Yeah. So, there's that. Are and they just... live bullets? Uh, that's probably not I something don't know. you know. He didn't say. I don't know. Or, <laughs> I well, wish I, I guess knew the answer Probably, to that because they probably don't have, like, the... It's probably more than just, like, the shell casing. Mm-hmm. I don't so, know. Weird. Okay. Yeah. For all I know, he took... Um, I'm thinking of... Like I those... like how I'm more worried about this crown he's wearing than the actual quote he said. I mean, it's like, it's a valid line of concern. Because the quote what is, is very with... like, I'm a crazy person saying crazy stuff, so. Yeah. You know those things that you feed into 
rifles where it's just like this long string of bullets. What is that called? Um, uh, Do you know what I'm talking about? A lot of bullets. Yeah. (laughs) I wouldn't be surprised. It's belt, is it? No, I don't think so. It sounds like, that's what I thought it was called. Maybe? Okay, what is a lot of (laughs) bullets called? (laughs) I know this, but... Uh, (laughs) It says ammunition. (laughs) Okay, that's not... Hang on. Oh, wait, here. It is a belt. A belt of 50 cal... Yes. Okay. Okay, that's what I thought. So... Like, am I wrong? Okay, we are military brats and we're horrible. Right. (laughs) Don't so know. I'm not. I'm not, and I don't go around guns, so my ignorance is usable. So, <laughs> um, I wouldn't be surprised if he just like lopped off the end of that, and then just like super glued two ends together and made himself a crown. <laughs> I don't know though. Well, yeah, because they make them. They also make them so that like, um, like you can carry them like like a sash. Yeah. Sort of thing. So yeah. So I don't know. He probably just did that. Yeah. I don't know the details behind how he made his crown of bullets. I do know that that whole thing of if the government comes and sends people to kill you, that's what a lot of people say who are very big into having a shit ton of guns everywhere. But again, yeah. you are not under attack. You're right. fucking fine. Have you ever seen that tweet that was some guy who's like. I need my right to my gun because if my son gets sick, I need to hijack an airplane to get him to a country where he can get medical care. And I'm like, why don't we just have socialized medicine instead? Because literally, you're just so, you're missing the point of life. Also, but like, whatever. that's what that's what you think when your son gets sick. You're not going to call an ambulance. Yes. You're going to hijack yeah. an no. airplane. Yeah, that was the whole country to get It's medical- not like our... What? Like, the problem with our healthcare system isn't necessarily that we provide bad care overall. We do to certain groups of people because we're it's all just expensive. because the healthcare system is racist. It's just really expensive. Yeah. Like, I don't, I don't understand that train of thought at and, all. I don't. I'm pretty sure the cost. That's of, what like, he said. Getting out of jail because you hijacked a plane. Yeah, that's a federal offense. <laughs> Yeah, what do you think is going to happen when you an- when you land in like Germany or something? Do you think that they're w- w- just going to let you off the plane and go to the hospital? Yeah, right. If they haven't shot you down by then, you're going to get arrested. Like, oh my god, that's just insane. Ugh. Ugh. Okay. Okay. So, I'm almost done. So, um, we already kind of talked about this. So. He convinces the followers to buy AR-15s, which to me is just another example of that, like, cult behavior where people do things that are not necessarily for their own good. Because, in my opinion, having an AR-15 is not a good that anybody needs to be getting. (laughs) Um, That's fair. Yeah. I don't, I didn't, like, I kind of knew this was going to happen because we're talking about guns. I don't see any reason why any civilian should have military-grade weapons. I just don't. I just don't. It's not necessary. As a um, military and, brat, I can yeah, say it's not that you do not need military grade weapons. No, you don't. No. Um, and again, like, what he is has, the point of that? Yeah. And again, he has a brother who owns a weapons manufacturer. So again, I think he just pulled this out of thin air and partnered up with his brother to be like, hey, if I get them, this is me just speculating. Be like, hey, if I get them to buy your guns, do I get a cut of it? Yeah. I could see that happening. I could. Again, this is just me speculating. There's no proof that this ever happened. Mm. I'm just guessing. It seems likely. And that seems highly likely. Yeah. So, um, yeah. So, yeah. He, he probably has, by... like, shares in the weapons manufacturing. Yeah, or something, or something like that. He probably does. Again, Since I don't know. Since the family know. shares everything. Yeah. So, um, yeah, he gets them to buy AR-15s. And then owning these guns brings you to a new tier of spirituality because they see you as a spiritual soldier and so you're more sacred and so this is a quote (laughs) okay yeah this is a quote from samuel pak who is a son of sun young moon and is sean's older half brother so samuel is from moon and his first wife um so samuel says i practice martial arts i think everybody has a right to do that if they do it responsibly guns the same way if they practice responsibly but i also know that when you involve young people when you involve religious fervor and when you involve potential conflicts with other concerned citizens that makes me very nervous and i'm with him on yeah that. <laughs> i mean yeah sums it up very very well and so um 
yeah so teddy really doesn't like that the sanctuary church is so big on guns um because when he was a child when they were still members of the unification church his brother accidentally shot their mother and she was left paralyzed from the waist down oh my god (laughs) yeah and this was when they were members like i said they were members of vacation church um they were never members of the sanctuary church they left before sean even came into the picture leadership wise um but the moons had always liked guns and i don't think they flat out encouraged their members to have them but it was just normal to go over to somebody's house and there would just be guns lying around you know what i mean yeah so yeah and so he doesn't want that to happen like something like that to happen again with the sc it probably has yeah, so one of the things that isn't going to help that is that they have their own militia. Uh, I, is that yeah. legal? I don't know. I'm into it. <laughs> so this is from the A&E documentary. Um, the militia trains youths, like, so like children and teenagers, in combat to defend against impending attacks on the kingdom of God. And they teach fatal moves with weapons, not just self-defense. Um, no, uh, thank you. <laughs> not into it. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah. Yeah, I feel like if they were a bigger group, because this thing's like, it's not a huge organization. You know, even the UC, it's never been, like, it isn't like Scientology. It's like thousands, it's not millions. Yeah, I mean, even like with Scientology, or like the, even like the Rajneeshis had way more people than this group ever did, because they spread a lot further. Um, But still, (laughs) I feel like if the group was bigger, the US government would be like, hey, we're going to see you maybe as an invading threat, so maybe don't do this. But I don't know. Yeah. I don't know how that would work. I I really hope there's someone keeping an eye on these people. I'm sure that there is, but I have no idea. Um, So yeah, I only have a couple more points. So in 2018, um, and this was kind of the focus of this episode of the A&E documentary. So this is in 2018, the Sanctuary Church held a ceremony in which about 250 couples um, renewed their marriage vows, right? The members were instructed to bring their AR-15s to this ceremony, oh, which no. was held at their church. This, <laughs> sorry, ceremony, this ceremony was held very soon after the Parkland shooting, and community members <gasps> were so freaked out that the elementary school relocated students for the day. Uh, yeah. Yeah, yep. and so... Yeah, this ceremony was one of, like, not the main points, but it was one of the big things that they focused on in um, the A&E documentary episode. Wait, so what was the point of bringing those to Well, the... because those are the rods of iron. Oh, right. Yeah. Sure. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the host uh... of the documentary actually interviewed Sean Moon, like, sat down with him and interviewed him. <laughs> I just didn't think anything he said should be repeated <laughs> that call. just wasn't because it was her basically just asking like why do you believe this and him just explaining it and i can get that from other places so like i didn't put any of that in here because i didn't yeah. think it was going to be like helpful information <laughs> if that makes sense it's um, just a, the ramblings of crazy yeah pretty much yeah um yeah and then just two more things so as I said before, the UC is very anti-LGBT, right? They always have been. Um, I didn't put this in because it's, like, really derogatory, but Moon himself, there are quotes of him going back years saying just horrible things about the LGBT community, and Sean continued on with that. Cool. So in 20, yeah, in 2018, the Southern Poverty Law Center named Sean as an anti-LGBT cult leader. So I mean, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, um, and then the sanctuary church itself identifies. <laughs> Whoa, what? Sorry, <laughs> sorry, my dog is barking. That's okay. Gypsy. Hello, Gypsy. Can What's you up? Oh, hi, Gypsy. Gypsy I love you so much. She was laying <laughs> on the bed with me, and then Tucker started barking downstairs. When I was watching your dog, she used to sleep on top of me. Oh yeah, she <laughs> does that. She like she has to have like best day of my body life to body contact. The last I time I watched her. your dogs. Last time I watched your my. But last time I washed your dogs, I broke my toes in your freaking ottoman. Well, Shannon, you you're wrecked. Kick the furniture. I literally, I stubbed my toe. It's this mm-hmm. leather. Well, I don't. Is it? I don't think it's actually like leather. It's like but, faux leather, but yeah. yeah. And it's on a wood 
frame. I stub my toe in the corner of it. And then yeah. on the, and this was like a day or two before they got back. And then their last day they were there, I did it again. And my toe was broken. But it was a pinky <laughs> toe. It's like, you can't do anything about that. You just kind of have to let it go because <laughs> they're so small. Look. Yeah. You didn't sue us back then and you have no proof. No. No, I'm not. <laughs> it was my own <laughs> fault. <laughs> you know, okay, I've broken both of my pinky toes multiple times because I hug the corner when I walk. Like, Shannon, it's just bad. Stop moving around. <laughs> I know. <laughs> you and your sister just need to live and find yourself one room. And me too. I know. Need to live in a bubble forever. Yeah. So, the Sanctuary Church, um, specifically, they identify LGBT persons as working for satan which diminishes their humanity which makes it easier to retaliate against them like they did Mm. with jewish people with the nazis and like our president is doing with immigrants specifically mexican immigrants right now so cool and then there's a fear and this is a quote from the host of the a and a documentary there's a fear that hate speech will cross over into hate action obviously i mean because that's that's like generally what happens yeah um, and then the last thing is in 2019, they held a which blessed church members AR-15s, which in the grand scheme of things doesn't seem that extreme, <laughs> but like, <laughs> but also that was they do that in like Russian year. Orthodox really, <laughs> too, though. So interesting. Um, and also, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, this is also the year after they got a whole bunch of backlash for having a marriage ceremony with all the AR-15s. So true. Having it in context with that, yeah. So my Um, summary line, it's a cult that has a lot of guns. (laughs) That's it. (laughs) I mean, that's a pretty good uh, summary of what we just talked about. Mm -hmm. So, okay. Does anybody, (laughs) what are your final thoughts? And then we'll move to, we don't have any Patreon shoutouts, but this would be where we would move to Patreon. Final Um, thoughts. um... Final thoughts. Um. I don't know. Or just comments that you couldn't work in earlier. I don't know. Look, that's not how the Bible works. That's no, not at all. Not. I'm the heathen of the group, work. and I know that. <laughs> Thanks, Shannon. Yep. It's just uh, <laughs> no, no, just yeah. a lot of no. Don't yeah. join a cult, okay? Mm-hmm. Don't do it. <laughs> also, if someone comes up to you with like the world's longest name of their organization. 90 Hi, I'm here from the Church of there Jesus and I don't know. Huh? <laughs> I couldn't even think of one. <laughs> I was trying to make a cult name. It didn't work. Just whatever. God, we're bad at this. <laughs> Me. Oh, I God. can't do it. I work on our cult name better. Although there are some like um uh Catholic groups like nut like nuns and stuff, some orders that are like really weird. Like the one in Ruma. Where all those retired nuns live, it's um, something about I think it's the Order of the Adoration of the Blood of Christ. So, all right. That seems I don't know. Similar. Catholics are like really metal with their names. <laughs> I mean, yeah, that's true. But whatever. Okay. Uh-huh. Um, I don't <sighs> have. We don't have like a stock goodbye line thing yet. So um, let's make one up. Okay. We tried to do that last week and it didn't work. <laughs> I'm not good on the spot, so I'm yeah. just gonna go with bye. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah. Don't be in a cult, I guess. Yeah. Not cool. That's good parting wisdom. Sheldon, stop. Sheldon is a cat. <laughs> he's trying to break into this room, and I'm not oh, letting him. So he's throwing his I uh, knew I was gonna be in here with my door shut, so I let my cat in first thing because otherwise that would have been a problem if he'd been in here i would have had to keep stopping to pull him off of stuff yeah get him off of me because you know i'm allergic to him so (laughs) would have just been sneezing the whole time yeah i would have been covered in hives would have been bad so it's fine yeah okay okay anyway bye friends bye bye thanks for listening to the triad our music is by scott buckley Our audio was recorded by our studio engineer, Craig Bott. If you like the show, please rate, review, and subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts. You can also follow us on social media. We're on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, and Tumblr as The Triad Podcast. 
Our website is the triadpodcast.wordpress.com. There you can find information about our latest episode, including the show notes and sources. We're also on Patreon as the Triad. Currently, all Patreon funds will go towards the costs of hosting the show. Each tier has its own rewards, but every patron receives our undying gratitude. If you have comments, questions, or stories, email us at thetriadpod at gmail.com. Thank you again for listening to The Triad, where we're spooky but sensitive.